Hello, today in English Literature with Susan, I want to talk about the Harlem Renaissance and uh, the poem related to that movement, Theme for English B, uh, by, written by one of the so-called members of, of that movement. Sometimes he deviated from the standards maybe of the movement, but generally he's considered as part of the Harlem Renaissance, Langston Hughes. Uh, before reading the poem, I, I like to explain something about the American history. Let us now turn back to the Civil War. After the Civil War, a uh, Civil War was most, uh, mostly happening because, uh, because of, uh, of the workforce. The Northerner wanted the workforce of the Southerners. And who were the workforce of the Southerners? The, the black slaves who were working on the plantations. And after the war, and after the victory of the Northerner or, or the Unionists, uh, many of those African slaves, Afro-American slaves, migrated to the north. Uh, so um, it, it seemed that the Southerners had all the time uh, sort of lied to, told a lie to, to the world that these people are happy with us, that they like to be our slaves. Uh, there was there happened a great migration. Many of the blacks, many of the Afro-Americans migrated to the uh, cities located in the north of the American continent, especially uh, the northern um, cities of the United States, especially in New York. And uh, there in New York, there was a city within a city, Harlem. Harlem is uh, a, a district in New York, but it was mostly populated by the black people. And there, the community of the black people started an artistic liter uh, literary movement called the Harlem Renaissance. The artists, the poets, the dramatists all gathered there. They, they started jazz music, for example. They started things related uh, to both the Afro-American community and the American nation in general. Uh, and there is another point that I want to explain. At the beginning of the 20th century, there were two general tendencies among the uh, Afro-Americans, uh, or, or we, can, we can call it an identity crisis, especially highlighted after the First World War. Uh, some of the Afro-Americans thought that they belong to the African continent, that they have to search for the African roots, or at least they have to consider what is prominent, what is important, as as uh, what is happening just just in the in the Afro-American community. So they they thought about intra-communal relationships, while some other Afro-Americans. So that, no, we are part of the American nation. We are part of the history of this country. Whatever this country is now, it is made and built by us. So we are part of the, part of the process of the nation, national um, status of this country or the nation building. So um, the Harlem Renaissance want, wanted to show this this embeddedness, this embodiedness, emb embodiedness of of the Afro-Americans in the American community. So they, they thought themselves as a broader nation. They, they didn't think that they are separate from the America. So American dream, whatever was America, whatever which had made America belonged also to these black people. In theme for English P, Langston Hughes is trying to show the same thing. Uh, the poem is about a 22 year college student, um, the professor, had asked them to to write to write an essay or something, and now we see his reaction or her reaction. Uh, the the poem uh, is, is not so much specific about genders. The instructor said, "Go home and write a page tonight, and let that page come out of you. Then it will be true." So heart speaks to heart. Write from your heart and then other people will, will understand what you mean. So other people uh, would, would feel a connection, a sense of conveyance when they read what you've written. And so in the class theme for English B, and this English B can also be suggested as something that he's in the secondary class. I know that it is not uh, technically related, but the, but the terminology can also be suggestive. I wonder if it is this, that simple. I'm 22, colored, born in Winston Salem. I went to school there, then Durham, 
then here to this college on the hill above Harlem. So Harlem is named as the location of the poem. So that, that sense of locationality of the blacks uh, within the white society, how, how they were living at the heart of New York City as a white center, and now, now they, they have their own centrality. So Harlem is named here, not accidentally. I am the only colored student in my class, even, even in Harlem. The steps from the hill lead down into Harlem, and you see the repetition, through a park, then I cross St. Nicholas, 8th Avenue, 7th, and you see how he feels located by naming all these participants or these details of the location. And I come to the Y, the Harlem branch Y. I know that this is the name of a building, but the names are suggestive. Harlem branch Y, the, there is a fork here, there is a branch, and maybe the blacks go to their branch, the boys to theirs, where I take the elevator up to my room, sit down and write this page. This is a Harlem branch Y. Uh, this was a part of a project and I know and the YMCA um, the stands for uh, for young, I don't know, maybe I have forgotten. Uh, so uh, so uh, this is about young people who are living in, in the United States. So the building um, is, is, is an association we can read here, uh, Young Men's uh, Christian Association. And he, he, he was living maybe in this, uh, in this large uh, building. It's not easy to know what's true for you or me at 22, my age. But I guess I'm what I feel and see and hear. Harlem, I hear you. Once again, we have the repetition of the term Harlem. The poem was written when Langston Hughes was old, but he imagines um, or he places himself in the place of a 22-year college student. I hear you. Hear you. Hear me. We too. You, me, you see the identity crisis here, here, you, here, me, we, too, you, me. The dissociation between you and me, and uh, once they get we, you, me, again, they are separated. Talk on this page. I hear New York, too. Me? Who? Oh. I hear New York, too, is interesting that I don't just listen to Harlem. I can hear the broader space, New York City. So I belong to New York City as well. And then that question, who am I as a black person? What is my location here? What is my position? How, how, do, how do I stand compared with other members of the society, of the American society? Well, now I'm a human being. I'm, I'm a typical American. Well, I like to eat, sleep, drink and be in love everything that any human beings may do i like to work read learn and understand life i like a pipe for a christmas present or records bessie bob or bach interestingly the word records here is not related to bessie bob or bach uh, bessie bob or bach is uh, the name of a short story collection by Rand walker uh, in this collection, Rand Walker uh, talks about uh, different locations in different um, Afro-American societies and different cultures related to them. So he also names a prominent work of uh, literature produced by Black pe person about Black community. I guess being colored doesn't make me. So he, he likes general present or he may like a present specific to the Afro-Americans. I guess being colored doesn't make me not like the same things other folks like or other races. So will my page be colored that I write? So th th this, is, uh, this is so sympathetic, so sentimental that if I'm, if I'm colored, should the paper also be colored? And this shows the, the, uh, the amount of racism the degree of racism of the American society, how they are, how they feel separated. Being me, it will not be white. So if this paper is my heart, if this paper is exactly what, what I can identify with because my teacher, my instructor has asked me to write from my heart, if it is me, so it shouldn't be white. Why is it white? But 
it will be a part of you in structure. No matter, now he finds the solution. We are part of one another. We are all Americans. So um, regardless whether we are white or black, we are, we are from the same paper, we share the same paper. And that's, that's not, uh, that doesn't matter. We are from the same body. The, the whiteness of the, uh, of the paper is also belonging to me. You're white, get a part of me as I'm a part of you. So here, not only America belongs to all the Americans, but also the sense of nationality that, that, that we belong together. Sometimes, perhaps, you don't want to be a part of me, nor do I often want to be a part of you. And this is, this is real, that they don't like one another. There is a history, there is a background and a relationship in a way. We cannot ignore the whole context of the Afro-American relations with the whites, nor do I often want to be a part of you, but we are. That's true. And, and this is a good resolution to come at. And this is the resolution many Afro-Americans uh, come across at the same time as, as did this young guy. I guess you learn from me, although you're older, and white so i can be your teacher because i have experienced things that you had never experienced and somewhat more free and you're somewhat more free you're not a, you're not and you're not free you're you're not free as i'm not free you're somewhat more free and they check the wording and he finishes the poem with this line this is the singular line singular whole stanza this is my page for english b and this is what what was him, this or her. This was what came from his or her mind to write as 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 that to fulfill that instruction as that essay. So thank you very much for listening, and I hope I can see you in my next videos.